Okay, so um, today we'll be having a look at the inflammatory bowel disease. First of all, we'll try to look at whatever modalities we have available. Um, then we'll try to understand what we use for what purpose. The main focus of my uh, small talk or lecture kind of thing is that we have to understand the terminologies we used for Crohn's. So the basic aim for this is Crohn's disease. Second thing is that um, a lot of things, uh, for example, I will not be covering a lot of fluoroscopy of or images of that, especially for Crohn's because in day in, day out, we are now moved on to CT and either even more to MR. So we should be moving ahead in that direction. That's why. Otherwise, I'll be probably sharing um about an ecr e poster which was i just found it very informative so you can go through that it will give you good examples of fluoroscopic findings in inflammatory bowel disease right so first of all um what is an inflammatory bowel disease inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic idiopathic disease basically um it has an immune basis right that means that some of the um, the cytokines as well as the inflammatory cells they create a situation wherein you have bowel wall inflammations also it's a chronic idiopathic also it has been called as a relapsing disease also okay <clears throat> usually it was considered to be higher in prevalence in the western world but now it is showing an increase in prevalence all over the globe. Usually you will find it from young to middle age. You can find a second peak in the old age also. Right? In older individuals also. So a kind of age is not really that helpful. But you must remember this. Now in IBD, which is the inflammatory bowel disease, you have two distinct entities which is the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis, right? They have a, a different kind of uh, pathophysiology in which they are there. So first of all, the most important part of Crohn's disease is that whatever inflammation takes place is actually involving the entire bowel wall. So the word we use is transmural, right? So in transmural means that the entire bowel wall will get inflamed and hence when you have the bowel wall, when you have an inflammation which is going across and beyond the wall also, that is why you will have a lot of adjacent changes as well. Got it? So this is most important to understand in pathophysiology of Crohn's. Next, most important part of understanding Crohn's is that when we are reading an image, we have to identify the pattern of involvement also. So Crohn's is notorious for giving a skip pattern. That means that the parts which are involved need not be in anatomical continuity. They can be in different, different parts of the GI system. Next, because the entire wall has been affected, it can actually create a fistula from the inside of the lumen to the outside of the lumen, right? So that is why it is a fistulizing disease. And as for any kind of inflammation, you can have an active inflammation or a chronic inflammation, right? So that's why whenever you are, um, whenever you are having inflammation in the entire wall and then depending on now whether it is active or inactive then you can have a fistulizing disease or a fibrostenotic disease. So any part of the GI system can be involved in Crohn's right. There is a skip pattern. There's a transmural or penetrating kind of a disease and then you can have either fistulizing or a fibrostenotic disease depending on the stage of the inflammation. Whereas, as the name suggests, 
ulcerative colitis. So the name itself is very helpful. So it is a large bowel predominant disease. Number one, it is usually continuous in its involvement. Next, rectum is nearly always involved. It, this is a very important clue, right? Because um, even Crohn's, as I said, can involve any part of the GI tract, right? So maybe it can involve rectum also. But then whenever we see a continuous form of inflammation, which is always involving the rectum, then we are more in favor of an ulcerative colitis. Next thing, it usually likes to involve only the mucosal part of the wall. So that means that it's, it's an ulcer kind of a, a disease, ulcerating kind of a disease, which does not want to involve the whole wall. Right? So with these two facts, two, three facts in mind, we have made a mental picture that this is an inflammation-based disease, has two distinct entities of Crohn's as well as ulcerative. So Crohn's can involve any part, but most commonly what we see is in small bowel. <clears throat> and in ulcerative colitis, we are finding that it's a large bowel disease and it's definitely not transmural. It's neither skin. After that, now we have to think of what is wall thickening, right? I am saying that now, whenever something gets inflamed, it has a lot of cells in it, lots of inflammation, it will get thickened. So what happens is for any kind of wall, bowel wall thickening, we have to see the pattern, right? So focal means less than 5 centimeter in length. And segmental means 60 to 40 centimeter in length of the segment which is showing the thickening or diffuses more than 40 centimeter, right? So this length is also quite important. I have put in this chart for us to know that whenever we are reading bowel wall thickening, we should try to understand what all can be the potential differentials, right? So there are not too many. If you will look carefully, there is one with ischemia. So there can be a vascular cause, right? There can be an infective cause or there can be a neoplastic cause, right? So in vascular uh, and then there can be vasculitic, right? Vasculitis based. <clears throat> and rest is all IBD. So these are few of your differentials, which you need to know, right? Because only then you can understand. So a, a very basic thing will be that for any kind of vascular cause, like an ischemia, this bowel wall thickening will follow territory, right? Arterial or venous. For TB, I will describe a few points because it is one of the most important differentials for inflammatory bowel disease, right? Then you can have neoplastic. But then for neoplastic, uh, also I will describe a few points in regard to this itself, right? So now let us move ahead and understand the course and management of this disease. Usually variable course, that means it can be relapsing or it can have remissions or it can be progressive. There are a lot of outcomes. One second. Okay, so there. Um... Okay, TB, yes, okay, of course. Um, right, so after this, so once we have, um, yeah. <clears throat> so now we know that variable course is there. Next thing is that whenever we are treating these patients of IBD, we just want to reduce the inflammation. There is no cure, right? We're just trying to curtail the inflammation. For refractory cases, a surgery can be done. Surgery makes more sense for UC patients because they have a continuous kind of a disease and they can undergo actually a total colectomy, right? 
but that is a very refractory phase and we really don't want to do it because